as we have been learning hypothesis testing, we reach this point where we have to make a decision. Is this test statistically significant or not? Now, I've told you that there are three ways that we can determine statistical significance, such as p-values less than 0.05, or finding a mean that exceeds a critical value. But I want to dig a little bit deeper into what statistical significance really means when we use that term. If I tell you that there is a statistically significant difference at a p less than 0.05, does that mean that there is a 95% chance that the alternative hypothesis is true or that there was an effect? Or does that mean that there's a 95% chance that the null hypothesis was false? Or does it mean that this finding will replicate 95% of the time? Or if the study was repeated, the null hypothesis would be rejected 95 times out of 100. Is that what statistical significance means? It is not. Well, what does statistical significance really mean? What you want when you do hypothesis testing is to know the probability that the alternative hypothesis is true, that there really was an effect, given the evidence. But what hypothesis testing gives us is the probability that we would find this evidence if the null hypothesis was true. But there's a problem with that assumption. The first one being that really the null hypothesis is never actually true. You remember the null hypothesis says that there's no difference between a sample mean and a population mean. But when you draw a sample, if you go out to enough decimal points, eventually there's going to be a difference. So to say that the sample mean and the population mean are exactly the same is never actually true. The sample means are never entirely equal. And the improbability that we're testing for, it's unlikely that we would find these results. Well, improbable things happen quite regularly. And the more we look for them, the more improbable things we find. In fact, that p equals 0.05 cutoff really just means that we're, we're comfortable enough with the idea that 95 times out of 100 will probably be right, but we've already given ourselves the 5% chance of error every time we set our probability at p equals 0.05. Another factor that plays into statistical significance is sample size. If you have large sample sizes, pretty much every test that you run is going to be statistically significant. And if you have small sample sizes, you may not find statistical significance even if there was a large effect. So we need to consider sample sizes as we talk about statistical significance. The, the meaning of statistically significance is the p-value is the probability of finding these results if the null hypothesis is true, p less than 0.05. So statistically significant means that only 5% of the time would we get these results by chance. What the p less than 0.05 really tells us is that the results were statistically significant, not that the results were practically significant, there is evidence that the treatment had some effect, but it doesn't tell us how large that effect is. And it tells us to reject the null hypothesis, but it doesn't prove that the alternative hypothesis is correct or that the null hypothesis was false. So what does it tell us then? That these differences were unlikely. They're unlikely to be due to chance. But then again, maybe they could be due to chance. And even if they're not due to chance, then the size of the difference between the means really does matter. So our solution, therefore, is whenever we report statistical significance or not, we should also report an effect size. So what we're going to learn about next is what is an effect size, how do we calculate it, and why does it matter?